Our next speaker is Mr. Joko Logis, who is BMG Lab Tech Support Specialist for the Asia Pacific region. Mr. Logis provides comprehensive support to distributors and end users from helping them to choose the best and most suitable reader for their research, installation, and including support for technical and application matters. He had personally used BMG Lab Tech microplate readers throughout his master's studies before starting his career as sales and support for BMG Lab Tech customers in the Malaysian life science industry. This experience with BMG Lab Tech microplate readers have allowed him to have a complete perspective and an understanding of what microplate reader users need, as well as how to not just sell, but more importantly, help and support the users to obtain the best data possible. Once again, let us please warmly welcome Mr. Jokologis. Hi, everyone. So um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for being part of this. So my name is uh, Jokologis. I'm the support specialist for BMG Lab Tech, especially for the APAC region. Um, so basically what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to talk about um, our instruments and how our instruments can help your work basically. And because the theme of today's um, talk, today's webinar I believe is about proteins and lots of protein work. So I'll touch a bit on uh, some protein uh, quantifications assays as well. So let me redo the screen share first because I share it to the wrong screen. Uh, give me a moment, please. Okay. All right. So, um, so basically, there are three main parts to my talk. So the first one is on the, <clears throat> the range of the readers that we have. And then I'll talk about a bit about the some basic protein quantification assays. And then uh, secondly, I'll talk about the advantages that we have, especially if you are doing not just protein assays or protein binding assays, but you're also doing like, for example, cell viability or cell type, uh, cytotoxicity assays, which I'm sure quite a lot of you will be doing as well. And then third, I'll be talking about our latest reader, which is the Ventastar that we just launched um, earlier this month. Right, so um, this is just a, look of our headquarter office in Germany. So our company headquarter is based in uh, Southwestern Germany, especially uh, particularly in the town of uh, Ortenburg. Um, so we are established in 1989. So uh, the special thing is that we are the micropit reader company. What that means is we only make micropit readers. We don't make anything else. So that makes us uh, a very specialized company and we are very focused and very innovative in terms of uh, creating um, and producing new micro readers. So we have a few daughter companies. Um, so for my part, um, I'm representing BMG Laptop Australia. So our Australian office is in uh, Mornington, Melbourne. Um, and then we have a big, network of distributors, including um, Philippines, which is represented by a company called Rainfield. Um, we have installed many, many different readers over, worldwide, and a lot of customers are happy with our uh, support. So as you can see, over the years, we have only been making readers. We don't make anything else. So that is uh, why we are very, very focused. So, okay, can you see the screen now? Yes. Yes, Thank you. Joko. yes. Yes, it's visible now. Thank you. Sir. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry about that. So, um, yeah, I'll just quickly go through. Um, so uh, I'll talk about three things. First is um, our range of readers and a bit on the protein quantification assays. And then secondly, why our readers are good for cell biology assays. And thirdly, our new reader. So again, in case you, sorry, you missed it earlier. So this is a picture of our head office. Um, so these are uh, our networks basically across the world. So as I mentioned, we have only been making micro creators, so which is why we are, very, we are very focused. So in terms of application, um, 
we have uh, quite a few different applications that you can use um, because we make micropaid readers. Uh, micropaid readers are sort of like all purpose kind of tool for research. So uh, we have helped customers to set up and run uh, a lot of different types of assays. Um, but listed here are some of the most basic assays um, that most people are doing. DNA quantification, protein quantification, uh, cell viability assays, um, and then we also have um, other uh, G protein couple receptors assays, kinases, uh, cellular metabolism assays, uh, intracellular calcium release, for example, and things like that. And if you notice, all of these are done with different uh, detection methods, all of which can be done with our readers. So we have more than a thousand new citations per year. Now this consists of our customers who run their um, essays using our readers. So in terms of the reader itself, um, we have um, one big range of uh, family products, all are micro readers, but they all do different things. So for example, we have the, um, the most entry level reader here, the spectrostan nano. So these only do absorbance, for example. And then we have a uh, Clarostar Plus, um, and then we have a uh, Fantastar, which is a new one. Uh, so I'm going to try and focus more about on these two different readers today. And we also have the Ferrastar, which is the highest um, end of micro reader. So Ferrastar normally is commonly used by guys who run um, high throughput screening, uh, pharma guys uh, and similar companies. So on the Spectrostar Nano, okay, wait, there's a pop-up on my screen. Give me a moment. So on the Spectrostar Nano, uh, basically it can uh, only do absorbance, but the special thing is here is that we use a spectrometer. If you heard of monochromator before, spectrometer is just a sort of a newer version of a monochromator. So it's very easy to use. You just tell the uh, software, which is connected to the instrument, what is the wavelength that you want. So if you do like ELISA's 450 or um, OD600, so you just type in 450 or 600 nanometer and it will run it for you. Um, so a lot of other functions, you can incubate your samples, for example, um, it can also uh, accommodate cuvettes. So if you want to use cuvettes, you can just put in cuvettes. Um, so commonly, uh, a lot of our users use this for ELISAs, uh, bacterial growth, um, DNA, RNA uh, quantification. So that's uh, those are the main uh, application. And on top of that, we also have a uh, accessory. So this is called the LV split. Um, so if you're familiar with NanoDrop, for example, so NanoDrop yeah, basically allows you to use like a micro volumes of samples, one or two microliters of your DNA or RNA samples, and you can read it uh, accordingly. But uh, the advantage of using LV split, which you can use with any of our reader, is that it can read 16 samples in one go. So that is 16 samples of two microliters. Um, so instead of you know doing one by one, uh, uh, in terms of the measurements of the sample, you can re read 16 samples in one go. So next I'll talk a bit about the um, basic protein quantification assays that normally people are doing. These are um, the common ones. So normally, how do we measure a pure protein concentration? Um, one of the most basic ways that um, to measure the protein concentration at 280 nanometer. So in our machine, basically you just type in 280 nanometer. Um, that is because the aromatic amino acid residues such as tryptophan or tyrosine absorb UV light at that specific uh, wavelength. So you can actually, this, uh, this is a curve from our reader. So you can actually see, for example, if you uh, measure a pure uh, protein sample, you can get a uh, peak at around 280 nanometer. So uh, the important thing here, normally when you do a protein concentration measurement of a pure protein sample, 
is that you normally have to calculate um, the concentration through this formula, which is the Beer's law. So absorbance is basically equal the path length. So normally if you use a cuvette, the path length is one centimeter because that's the, the width of the cuvette. But if you use a micro plate, the path length will be different, but in our software, uh, it can be standardized to one centimeter. So put in the path length um, and then the concentration will then be calculated based on the absorbance value. And lastly, you need to know what is the uh, extinction coefficient of your protein sample. So there are multiple ways to calculate the, uh, or to determine the uh, extinction coefficient. Um, a lot of people sometimes can struggle with this, um, especially if you're not having a pure sample. So the extinction coefficient will be quite difficult to determine in this case. Other than absorbance at 280 nanometer, uh, other um, common assays are Bradford, BCA and Lowry assays. So absorbance at 280 nanometers just now, as I mentioned, uh, this is a very direct method of measuring protein concentration because you don't use any standards. You don't use BSA, uh, the uh, bovine serum albumin as a standard protein, for example. You just measure your protein sample. But the caveat here is that your protein sample must be very pure and you must know what is the extinction coefficient or else you cannot calculate the concentration. Uh, advantage, um, basically it's quick because you don't need to add any reagent, you don't need to buy any reagent, you don't need to get any standards. Um, but again, the disadvantage, uh, and quite a big one, I would say that it's not so sensitive. So if you have very little uh, sample, it won't be able to uh, detect uh, the protein sample uh, accurately. So next one is Bradford. So Bradford, as you know, is a color calorimetric assay that is based on the interaction between the Comacy brilliant blue and the arginine and the aromatic residues in your protein. So uh, when the reaction happens, when it detects that there is a protein, uh, the absorbance value will shift from 470 to 595 because of the binding to those residues. So the advantages are it's a quick method. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just add the reagent in and uh, um, that's it basically. The, the disadvantage is that you need to use a uh, standard. So in this case, normally people will use the BSA protein standard. And uh, basic conditions and detergents may also interfere with the dye's ability to bind to the protein. Now in terms of BCA assay, I think a lot of people are also very um, used to running this assay. It's also a color metric assay. So it uh, depends on the reductions of the copper ions. When, and then where it will be quantified by the BCA and then the circulation, and then the end product will be absorbed. I will absorb light at 562 nanometer. So the higher the absorbance, the more protein you have. So the advantage is that BCA assay is less sensitive to the types of amino acid in the protein. So it means that you don't have to have a uh, super pure uh, protein samples. So it doesn't really matter what uh, amino acids composition you have in your protein sample. It can, you can use it. You can use this BCA assay to basically um, quantify your proteins. And the reagent is also not so sensitive to detergents and denaturants. So it's okay to have those in your buffer. This advantage, uh, standard curve, you need to redo a standard curve uh, using a standard commonly uh, BSA assay, oh, sorry, BSA standard. And then uh, the incubation steps, for example, also normally take some time. So you need to uh, prepare everything on a plate, for example, and then uh, incubate it for 30 minutes at 37 degrees before you can measure it. And then lastly is the Lowry assay. So Lowry is just like BCA, it depends on the uh, reduction of copper ions, uh, but it use a different uh, reagent. So you use this FC reagent uh, where it's read at around 750 nanometer. Advantage is again, high sensitivity and precision. Disadvantage, similarly like BCA, you need standard curve as well. Um, and the a bigger disadvantage here is that uh, normally Lowry assays is more complicated assay to run. 
So it will require longer procedure. So obviously if it's more complicated, there are more likelihood of making mistakes uh, when you're doing the steps as well. So that's another thing to think about. So uh, here is a simple summary of the uh, normal assays that people are doing to measure protein concentrations. Um, so the most basic or primitive one is A, uh, A280, which is absorbance at 280. But again, rarely nowadays, very seldom people are running this. Uh, the most commonly ones uh, that people run are BCA, Bradford, and maybe a bit of Lowry. Um, other than that, you can also measure the protein concentration you have with uh, fluorescence method. So you don't always have to do absorbance. So you can do it with a nano orange um, or cubic protein assay. So normally for either of these two, similarly with uh, Bradford BCA as well, uh, you can normally buy a kit from a uh, common manufacturer. So you don't have to you know, prepare your own chemicals. So normally all comes in a box and then you just uh, follow the um, instructions. So in terms of 280 here um, is just an example of the ones that are run using our reader. So if you have a pure protein, I think in this case, um, we are testing the BSA protein standard. So you can also get a nice standard curve. Um, so our software also allows you to uh, create standard curves automatically within the software uh, as soon as you get the raw data. So you don't have to uh, sort of waste time, you know, go to Excel and manually do all these things. These are samples for Bradford assays. So for things like Bradford assay, because there's a shift from a uh, region around 495 to 595, our reader can also do this kind of uh, 3D um, sort of measurement. So if you measure the reaction across multiple cycles, you can see the peak, the initial peak that decreased slowly or sort of shift from around uh, 495 to 500 to around 595 here. So it sort of shifts over time in terms of the peak. So it's quite a cool data that you can get. BCA assay, um, this is a sample as well, done on the BSA uh, standard that is commonly used. Uh, on our website, you can get uh, a lot of different application notes uh, that detail out how you can run all these assays on our readers, if you have our reader. So in this particular application note AN299, basically you can uh, have the methods of A280, Bradford, BC, and Lowry assays. So if any of you would like a um, PDF copy of this, uh, just let me know in case you cannot find it on the website. And other than this, uh, you can also do a low volume or micro volume protein measurements using our accessory that I mentioned just now, the Elvis plate. So basically, um, you just use a two microliter of your protein sample and you can do the protein quantification. Um, so our Elvis plate has been validated across a quite a big range of protein concentration. So you can measure uh, protein concentration as low as 0 0.2 milligram per mil to 18 milligram per mil. And we have also compared it with the normal QV, QVAC, QVVS uh, spectral photometer, along with nanodrop as well. And as you can see, um, the performance are very, very similar. Uh, a cool app note that I would like to share here as well is the um, miniaturization and improved throughput of BCA concentration determination method. So what this means is basically uh, you run a BCA assay, but instead of running it at 96 well plate, you run it at a 384 well plate or even 1536 well plate. So the throughput is higher, but the advantage here is that you can save more reagents. So it is quite a cool thing. Um, so just to summarize what uh, the method uh, basically offers is that normally you get the BCA assay kit. So it comes in a one liter reagent normally. And on the product uh, label, it will tell you that this is, uh, you can use this for 5,000 micropay assays. 
if you use a 96 watt plate. So uh, in a typical well, then you will have 25 microlit of your sample. That can be your standard or that can be your unknown protein sample. And then you add the BCA reagent, 200 microliter. So the total is 225 microliter. Now that app note that I showed you just now basically allows you to uh, use the same one liter SA kit and you can extend sort of the throughput. So you can use a 384 well plate and you can run 100,000 assays using the same kit. So what you need is you just, instead of 25 microlit, you use even less two microliter of samples and then just 10 microliter of the reagent. So this is a big, big uh, saving and you still get the same performance. Um, obviously there's some uh, drawback here because 384 well plate, the well is actually quite smaller, much smaller than 96 well plate. So your pipetting might be a bit more difficult to do. Um, so if any of you maybe are doing like uh, high throughput stuff or high throughput kind of screening, this can be quite useful, especially if you have maybe an automatic robotic injector that will help you a lot. So if we go to even uh, further extreme, if we use a 1536 well plate, uh, the well will be extremely small and it will be almost impossible to pipe it in. Um, you can use a 1.5 microliter of sample and just 7.5 microliter of your re BCA reagent. And then you can run 130,000 assay. So yeah, this is quite a big um, increase in terms of uh, lengthening the use of your uh, assay kit. We also have a blog post on this particular uh, topic, protein measurement, because a lot of people sometimes maybe are confused. Um, there are so many different methods, what method we should use best. So if you are interested to know, I'll say, try to share the link as well later in the chat perhaps, um, so you can have a read on this uh, topic. Okay, so that's on the range uh, briefly and also our, um, some of the basic or common absorbance methods that, uh, sorry, absorbance method that people use typically for protein quantification. So next I'll talk a bit about our other readers and some of the application that normally people uses. Um, by the way, if I'm talking too fast, just let me know. Um, so uh, what this is one of the readers that uh, I plan to focus on today. This is the Clara Star Plus, one of our best seller and one of our most um, capable reader. So with the Clara Star Plus, you can run absorbance, fluorescence intensity and FRET, luminescence and BRAD, TRF, TRFRET, FP, alpha screen, and uh, many more. So uh, for those of you who are maybe doing like um, enzymatic assays or protein, protein binding, uh, then you can perhaps maybe you are doing FRAG or BRAG then uh, if you have any questions later on you can uh, post it up as well because today I'll, I won't be talking too much into the theories of all, all these methods because that will be uh, quite a few hours of uh, sort of lecture so but if you have any questions feel free to post it later but essentially before I continue essentially uh, normally, for example, if you're doing a cell viability assay and you use MTT assay, for example, MTT is a very common assay, but MTT is an absorbance assay and it's an endpoint assay. Uh, basically, you get the uh, growth of the um, your cells at just a certain point of their uh, growth journey. So uh, there's a, an alternative method of that. So uh, quite a lot of people have been using it as well. Uh, uh, something called as an Alama Blue assay. So Alama Blue allows you to actually measure the cell viability, whether they are growing cancer cells or whatever, uh, to allow it or to allow you to monitor the growth of the cells uh, as it is growing inside the microbe reader over time. So it's a real-time kinetic measurement and it's done using fluorescence. So same thing, you're measuring cell viability, but you can do it with absorbance or you can do it with fluorescence. Some uh, assay kits or some manufacturer even produce a luminescence uh, cell viability assay kit as well. So by having one goal, there's multiple options. So which options are the best? I would say that normally fluorescence will always be more sensitive than absorbance. Because fluorescence 
basically uh, binds or targets the specific compounds or cells uh, in, in of your interest. So you know there's less interference interference from uh, contaminants. So fluorescence, luminescence, and everything else here are normally more sensitive than absorbance. If you can uh, run or if you can choose to not run absorbance. So what's the special thing with our reader? So our reader runs on a monochromator, but the monochromator here is different from any monochromators. So our monochromators are our own technology, uh, something called as a linear variable filter, LVF monochromators. So this is our own technology is patented. Nobody else has this. Um, why we produce our own LVF monochromator is because all the other monochromators are not good enough. Um, they are not good enough because they have a lot of background light, it's not sensitive enough, and it doesn't give you a very good data. So this is just a brief look of the construction of our monochromator. Basically, it's using a filters, sort of uh, ingredients. You cannot find this in any other reader on the market. Only BMG has this. So what is the advantage? Uh, one of the advantages is the larger bandwidth. So normally when you are running things like luminescence or fluorescence assay, you have to set what is the bandwidth. So the bandwidth is like sort of the coverage area that you are measuring. Um, so the bigger the bandwidth, the higher the signal you'll get. So to compare, normally common monochromators of other brands out there only has a limitation of 20 nanometer bandwidth. So our LVF monochromator, it can go up to 100 nanometer bandwidth. So if you look at uh, lower sort of uh, samples here at the x-axis to the left side, you can see that with the red color bar, we can actually detect low uh, amount of samples. But with other monochromators in the market that only have 20 nanometer of bandwidth, signified by the green column bar here, you can see that it cannot even see what is the the one on the left hand side. So the signal you get with the 100 nanometer bandwidth that is uh, provided by our monochromator is basically way higher than uh, any other monochromator on the market. Um, if you run things like nanobread, which is a luminescence assay, um, you can see that if you compare our monochromator and other monochromator, you can get a better uh, shape of curve, you know, whereas you see, if you see the conventional monochromator here, it doesn't really differentiate the lower concentration. It sort of treats everything like roughly the same thing. So you get a more jagged kind of curve. So it doesn't really represent your sample very well. So uh, it's less sensitive as well. So yeah, so this is uh, the one I mentioned just now. So 25 nanometer bandwidth, you only cover a small area of measurement. Okay, so the smaller the coverage, the smaller the light, it will measure. So the less sensitive the machine is. So with our LVF monochromator, it can read up to 100 nanometer. This is especially useful if you are doing luminescence assay because your signal will be way higher compared to your background. So our software also comes with a fluorophore toolbox. So a lot of people that run fluorescence, sometimes they don't know what is the setting for certain dyes. So we already have the list of dyes. So you just click the dye you want. You don't need to worry about the wavelength and then it will run the assay for you. So another thing we have as well is the enhanced dynamic range. So uh, the problem with running fluorescence and luminescence assay sometimes is that on the same plate, you have sample with very low signal and you have sample with very high signal. And these two extremes sometimes cannot be accommodated on the reader. But for our reader, it's no, not a problem. So your data will not be oversaturated. And for the lower signal, it will also be able to be read. So this is basically what the enhanced dynamic range means. It can measure a big range automatically for you. So you don't have to manually adjust the sensitivity of the machine. So for our machine, you can read up to 700, and mil 700 million RFU. This is the biggest range in the market. So it can uh, accommodate a big range of samples concentration, sample amount. Um, and then for luminescence, it can read up to 200 million uh, counts per second. So our reader also comes with a top and bottom focus. So basically it can uh, focus on your sample to get the highest signal possible. So uh, all these again are done automatically. 
different shaking modes for all across our readers, linear orbital and double orbital. So the interesting thing here is that a lot of people don't know what is the difference between all this shaking. Most of uh, other brands out there only offers linear and orbital. But the problem is linear and orbital are not very good for cellular samples or bacterial samples. So uh, we come up with a double orbital. So double orbital basically allows a, um, excuse me for a second. So double orbital allows um, the shaking of your cellular samples uh, so that uh, it doesn't shake too hard, but it's still uh, enough to basically agitate the sample so that your cells can grow happily. Linear will be too harsh and orbital will actually cause clumps. So uh, that is uh, something that is not commonly known. Um, and then for our reader, it also allows multiple points of reading per well. So this is also very useful. So uh, quite a lot of you, I think maybe have encountered a sample that doesn't dissolve properly. So you have precipitates, uh, things just floating around, you know. So if you're doing things like absorbance, that will affect the reading a lot. So uh, that, that is why we come up with orbital reading mode, spiral, and even matrix scan. So it will read multiple points in a well so that you get a more uh, representative data of your samples, especially if your samples have precipitates. Matrix scan, this is quite, uh, quite a cool sort of uh, function as well. So if you're growing cells, you can see whether your cells are mostly in the center or on the left. It's sort of almost like a fluorescence microscope already. It's just that it's not really an um, actual image of the sample, but it gives you a representative data. So for example, this is a matrix reading of a cell layer. You can see the cells are mostly uh, surrounding the uh, on the edges of the well, not really on the middle, for example. So uh, one reviewer says uh, that having well scan is very good because uh, it can substitute your fluorescence microscope. Um, why? Because a, on our reader normally use a lower excitation light intensity, so it causes less cell damage as well. So our reader also can be equipped with a region injector. So you can have two region injectors. So for certain assays that requires um, sort of fast uh, kind of uh, reaction. So instead of you pipetting your reagent manually to the plate, you can ask the machine to pipette the reagent to your uh, microplate. So this is useful for calcium assays normally because an enzymatic assays, because normally these assays, the moment you start from uh, well A1, for example, if you start from well A1 and then you add a substrate there, by the time you go reach the last well, the first wells are already reacting. So you don't get a standardized kind of measurement because the starting point are different for each well. So by asking the reagent injector on board in the machine to do the job for you, you can minimize your pipetting sort of, you can compensate your pipetting speed as well as your pipetting error as well. So this is uh, one of the uh, um, sample of uh, intracellular kind of uh, cellular assay. So uh, it's using this fluoro, fluoro 4 uh, dyes um, and these cells, HEK293. Uh, uh, basically the, uh, the start of the reaction here are induced by the addition of histamine. So we use the reagent injector on board in the uh, reader and we inject histamine to all the cells and then at cycle time or 10 seconds after 10 seconds after the injection then you can see the signal are basically increasing over time so you can also add like uh, ACU so this is like a uh, gas control so basically the idea here is that instead of growing your cells in a CO2 incubator, you can grow them inside the reader and read the uh, growth and measure the growth at the same time. So you can uh, set what is the O2 and CO2 percentage that you want. So obviously you have to connect uh, the reader to a nitrogen and carbon dioxide gas tank. So uh, this function is very useful for metabolic studies, uh, ischemia, reperfusion studies, and tumor bi biology. 
Now, lastly, uh, I want to talk about our newest reader. So that is the Venter star. So the Venter star is basically the sibling of the Clero star that I talked about just now. It's a, a younger sibling. Uh, it's a bit smaller, uh, a bit more affordable as well in terms of price. Um, so it can detect everything that the Clero star can do except the alpha screen. So Clero star can measure alpha screen. But again, not everybody runs alpha screen. So if you're not run, running alpha screen, then you can consider Fantasta. So you also use the same LVF monochromator as the Clarosta Plus. Again, that's our patented technology with a bandwidth of up to 100 nanometer. This is the biggest in the market. And hence, it makes the LVF monochromator from BMG LabTech the most sensitive in the market. Incubation as well, up to 45 or 60 degree. And then again, well scanning, it also can do the well scanning that I mentioned just now. And uh, a lot of the other same function as the um, Clara Star Plus. Enhanced dynamic range, it can cover uh, on the same plate, it can read the smallest amount of samples up to the highest amount of samples without any saturation of data. And you also can do uh, autofocus, so you can get the highest signal possible from each well. And then I can also do a crosstalk reduction. So what crosstalk is, is basically when you run things like luminescence assay. So normally when you run luminescence assay, you use a white plate. So sometimes um, the light from one well actually will travel to another well. So that will sort of uh, make the signal to become not so accurate. So uh, we can reduce this kind of crosstalk. Um, so the way we reduce it, basically there are two ways. Um, so the first way is that we use a physical sort of a spoon kind of hole with a hole so that it can focus the light. Okay, so that one, the light from one well doesn't go to the detector. So it, the light doesn't bleed to each other. So we can use this kind of uh, physical blocking. With the Ventasta, all these are done automatically. So you don't have to like add this physical blocking thing inside the reader. Everything is done automatically. And the other thing is a mathematical reduction. This is done by the software. So this physical and mathematical are the two ways we reduce crosstalk. So if I go back, step. So if you see without crosstalk reduction, there's sometimes a lot of uh, background noise from all the other wells because white wells, uh, white micropate doesn't really block the light very well. So the well, the light from one well can still travel to another well. With crosstalk reduction, blanks will be blanks. So we won't get any like weird signals from blanks and things like that. So you can reduce all the noise and you only get the signal from your controls or your samples. So our software, um, as maybe some of you already know, our software is uh, license-free software. So what it means is that it doesn't come with any passcode, pass key, license key, or whatever. You can install it in as many PC and your own laptop as well. That's possible. So there is no limitation on this. And our software also comes with a comprehensive analysis uh, capability. You can do even group comparison. Uh, ANOVA test, T-test for significance, uh, EC50, IC50. Uh, you have your own uh, user-defined formula. For example, sample minus blank divided by control times 100% or something like that. All sorts of customized formula can be inputted inside the software. So the idea here is that um, um, you tell us what essay you want to run, what is the formula. We set up all the template properly in the software. So each time you run the same assay, the final calculated data will show up. So you don't have to go to Excel and do everything yourself. Okay, so everything can be done for you. Even things like uh, enzyme kinetic uh, assay, such as Michaelis Menten, you want to calculate the KM Vmax, everything can be done inside. Accessories, it comes with a reagent as well. So the difference with the Clarosa is that the reagent for the Fantasta is placed outside. And the 
unique thing as well with the Fantastar is that we have a heater and stirrer for the first time in a microplate reader. So you can put a beaker on this uh, sort of uh, metal ring here. So just uh, It acts as a heater and then you just uh, drop a few of your magnetic stirrer and then you can stir your sample. At the same time, you can use the reagent injector. So the beaker will act as a vessel for your reagents and then the injector will automatically inject the reagents to your microplate. So it is quite useful if you are, um, for example, if your reagent needs to be uh, injected at certain temperature, so the heater will do that job. Uh, or if your reagents, for example, maybe contains like, you know, uh, insoluble particles, so it needs to be stirred constantly. So you can do all this here. So, and the heating and stir stirring are all software controlled. So you can do this uh, quite easily. Same with the Carasta, you can also do a uh, um, sort of uh, growth curve of your cells and then uh, grow them in a specific O2 and CO2 uh, sort of uh, parameters. So this is a sample of the uh, Promega Life Cells Base Assays. So this is one of the most common one that people do. So the cell tox green from Promega as well, uh, basically it measures the uh, cytotoxicity, the real-time glow measure the cell viability. So uh, at this particular application note 278, uh, we show how in our reader, you can read these two different kit, oh sorry, these two different uh, assay together on the same plate. So you don't have to run it on separate plate. So you only prepare your sample one time. So in this particular case, um, this is a uh, untreated control cell. So on the right, the red color curve is a luminescence real-time glow viability assay. So it's measuring the viability of the cell. And then the blue one is the cytotoxicity measurement. So because this is untreated, obviously you see that the cytotoxicity level is maintained throughout because it is not being treated. So there is nothing that kills the cells. But at the same time, at the same point, you can also see that the cells are growing happily based on the uh, red color curve that is uh, from the viability assay. So this is two different reagents, but done uh, run on the same plate with the one sample. And this can be done with our reader. So the Ventasta can also accommodate LV split, as I mentioned just now. So our LV split again is for micro volume samples. So you can measure just two microliters of DNA, RNA or protein sample, and you can measure 16 samples in one go. And this uh, plate, uh, basically you can use it with any of our reader. So uh, I'm almost at the end now. So what makes us different? Basically as a company, we are a specialized company. So we don't make many different types of instruments. We only make micro readers. So which is why we are very innovative in this field. Um, our readers are among the most sensitive and the most reliable in the market. Um, reliability obviously is a very, very big factor. Um, you do not want to get a reader that breaks next year or you know two years later. Um, another thing is that uh, all our readers comes with a lifetime uh, free support. So whenever uh, any of you that use our reader has any question in terms of uh, maybe weird results or you just need maybe an advice on which kit or which reagent kit to get, uh, feel free to always contact us. We'll provide all our support free of charge for the lifetime of the instrument. And also we have a powerful analysis software and a license-free software as well. And the compliance for the FDA CFR 21 part 11, basically this, what it means is audit trail. Uh, this is included free of charge. So that is it, I think. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions on any of our readers, uh, we have our contact from the Philippines, uh, Rainfield. Um, you can contact them at this phone number here, fax here, and email here. Okay. Um, I think before I end, I'll just uh, share one video, if that's okay. So let me know if you cannot hear or see the video. Small things can bring the biggest changes. So does the Vantastar. 
This new multi-mode microplate reader will simplify your lab workflow. Don't worry anymore about sensitivity settings, focus, or signal saturation. The Vantastar features new technology that makes every assay easy. Simple assay optimization, automatic sensitivity adjustment with enhanced dynamic range technology, automatic crosstalk reduction, as well as fast and automatic focus detection mean that you will get the best possible data without the need to make any measurement adjustments or learning to manage software settings. BMG LabTech's proprietary LVF monochromators and filters guarantee great sensitivity in fluorescence intensity and luminescence modes. For absorbance, a UV V spectrometer ensures super fast spectral acquisition. The Vantastar is extremely flexible and can be equipped with reagent dispensers and an atmospheric control unit for physiological cell based assays. For so much reader, its small footprint and affordable price mean that the great performance of a BMG LabTech plate reader can fit on more benches and in more budgets. And do not worry about reliability. With BMG LabTech, made in Germany dependability is by design. The Vantastar offers great value together with the great performance you expect from a BMG LabTech reader. It is simple and easy to use and at a price that is accessible to most labs. This kind of technology, performance, and reliability could only come from one manufacturer. BMG LabTech, the microplate reader company. And that will conclude my presentation. Thank you so much, everyone.